Well, Cyprus was the name of an exercise that was organized in late 2017 under the Estonian presidency of the European Union that tried to bring together um, the hybrid challenges we are increasingly confronted with, with a, a cyber dimension. In other words, a cyber means um, cyber-enabled hybrid challenges and threats. In other words, all those so-called hybrid uh, threats that are carried out through cyberspace and for which cyberspace acts as an enabler and a multiplier. It's very difficult to predict even how cyber warfare uh, would look like. Uh, it is inevitable that from now on every major military operation would be carried out also through cyber means and they would be an integral part of any kinetic operation. But if by cyber warfare you intend a major cyber hostile operation without necessarily having a strictly military component that could uh, cripple transport systems, communication systems, energy, uh, systems. Of course, that could be a very costly um, incident. There have already been some such cases in the past. In 2017, WannaCry and NotPetya, two major malwares that hit many, many parts of the world, had crippling effects on uh, hospitals, communication systems and transport worldwide. And the cost was very significant. Can you imagine that being replicated on a larger scale? Also, considering that very often these effects are hardly controllable. They could easily run out of control, even on the part of those who use them. And of course, the cost would be gigantic, also in terms of uh, casualties and human lives. That is a kind of activity that probably has less direct kinetic effects in terms of uh, physical violence, but could have a multiplier effect in the second stage. And therefore, so far, fortunately, we haven't had any such event, any such cyber Armageddon, but that could still be a possibility. There was already a decision on the part of allies a few years ago in 2014 to make cyber a domain of operation, a domain of military operations, so that the alliance would be able to defend itself as well in cyberspace as it does on land, on air and at sea. And that is a process, not something that happens overnight. Uh, we are setting up a cyber operations center in Mons at the military headquarters of the Alliance. And of course, cyber is increasingly factored in, in all our exercises and our activities. And we are increasingly cyber aware in this particular domain. That is something that is as important for the Alliance as it is for individual allies. Also because we are only as strong as our weakest link. And therefore, we are also making extra effort to strengthen the cyber defenses of individual allies because, yet again, we must be prepared in all our parts of our alliance to withstand cyber attacks or military attacks with the cyber component. 2014 is the year of uh, the illegal annexation of Crimea and the, the so-called rebellion in the Donbas region. And that had a very strong psychological effect and impact on the alliance to the extent that just one year afterwards the Alliance agreed on a common approach, a common strategy against uh, hybrid warfare. And ever since, of course, the attention to this aspect has increased. Although what has happened is that hybrid operations have started taking place rather below the level of armed conflict, below the level of NATO's Article 5. And of course, the challenge in that particular case, even for an, an organization like the Alliance, is to be sufficiently well equipped to face up to those activities that lie to some extent between routine incidents, uh, uh, daily occurrences, and uh, uh, the level of uh, military conflict. Everything in between today is uh, what keeps us awake at night, to some extent, that what our agencies are dealing with, and I think we have to be able to uh, offer sufficient adequate responses that could also help us tackle this major challenge to our uh, security. The main challenge is that as opposed to, for instance, the nuclear or chemical domain, weapons of mass destruction, we do not have an international treaty, an international regime in place to this effect. We don't have international multilateral agencies, such as the International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna or the OPCW in The Hague, that oversee uh, these processes and that to some extent is still um, terra incognita. 
We do agree that international law in its entirety applies to cyberspace, but the way in which it applies in practice is still a contested issue at the international level. And of course, when it comes to cyber weapons, so to speak, the main difficulty is to deal with them as we do with weapons of mass destruction. First of all, it is difficult to inspect them. It is difficult to verify them. It is difficult to dispose of them because it is software. It is not hardware, it is not heavy infrastructure, and in most cases it is not state-owned. And we know that all non-proliferation and control treaties are signed between states. And when it is non-state actors, when it is private operators, when it is criminal gangs that are the owners of these weapons, it is much more difficult to enforce compliance with that. Add to that that, of course, digital weapons are not as visibly, physically harmful as uh, um, traditional weapons of this kind, and therefore they do not engender the same visual and moral horror as nuclear or chemical weapons, and therefore also the uh, uh, awareness of public opinion international uh, players is much lower in this field. Perhaps only a major disaster in this area would probably generate sufficient attention in order to be able to agree norms of responsible state behaviors and also to agree on taboos uh, on the possible use of cyber weapons in this domain. A number of efforts have been made at the multilateral level in this field, and in 2015 the group of governmental experts appointed by the UN agreed in general and in principle on the applicability of international law, including international humanitarian law to cyberspace. But ever since, there has been increasing uh, disagreement among the main players at the state level. Uh, and it has been increasingly difficult to achieve agreements in successive ways of the GGE. Now a new initiative has just started at the UN level with uh, open-ended working groups on the one end that have just started the work that include all uh, UN members in principle and another set of the group of uh, governmental experts that is due to start its work a few months from now. We will see how these two distinct and separate initiatives will run in parallel and maybe converge at some stage. There is hope that some convergence could be achieved uh, yet again on some basic principles of state behavior. Remains to be seen whether there will be sufficient uh, levels of compliance with that, uh, with that possible agreement. It is a situation in which, however, the general international landscape is not particularly conducive to agreements at multilateral level. Multilateral system is at risk and in danger these times, so we can only hope that uh, reason will prevail in this field. NATO as such is not a, a, a norm-setting organization, but of course we support every effort that could help us keep an open uh, cyberspace, open for business, and also a safe and secure one.